So a lot of our customers really struggle to just getting data together. And as you just described, I, I, I think what's so fascinating is everybody wants to do the in-memory, machine learning, yeah. real-time stream. It's, it sounds really attractive, right? And I'm sure it makes a hell of a resume if you have that, if yes. that the checkboxes. Yes. But I think the big value really in a lot of companies is just really bringing the data together and getting a 360 degree view of your process, of your customer, of your behavior. <clears throat> yes, absolutely. So if I could use yeah, this. Yes, please. Right? So traditionally, let's say you had your enterprise data warehouse. Okay. And I was doing some batch or bulk analytics on that. Let's say the simplest one is I'm doing a simulation for a fraud scanner. Mm -hmm. Because I've developed a new rule that says if this, this, and this happens, it's a fraud. But just to make sure there are not a lot of false negatives and I don't uh, make all my customers angry, let me do a, <laughs> yeah, you're that's, traveling. That's, that, okay. That, right? Hmm. hmm. So, but <laughs> let's not talk about credit card companies. <laughs> but So with my bank, um, that happens quite frequently. Okay. So they, they, I guess they should use Cascading. Ch then. Change your bank to my yeah. supplier. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so, so the aim is um, the more you can run your um, uh, simulation on historical data to mm -hmm. check for false positives, the better you know what the state <coughs> is. But at the same time, you've detected a new attack pattern, mm -hmm. and time matters. Mm -hmm. So, so the more time it takes for simulation, the more time that fraud oh, is happening okay. as well. So. You have an enterprise data warehouse, and there is uh, this much data fits on it. Yeah. And let's say it is three months worth of data. Mm. And this takes about 24 hours or maybe 14 hours to run the simulation on that. Oh, and meanwhile, you're pleading money over here. In meanwhile, you're bleeding uh, money because you want to maintain the customer relationship yeah. and the trust that you're not taking a kayak trip in Papua New Guinea and you try to swipe <laughs> and yeah. it's like... <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah. So so the first set of use cases where I believe um, the big data makes a very interesting play is that this is three months. Mm -hmm. And let's say this takes 12 hours to do. Right. Um, move this to Hadoop. So, so the first thing is, what if instead of three months, you can run it on 12 months? Right. The data doesn't fit in Enterprise Data Warehouse, mm -hmm. but now it can if it moves over here. Mm. And on top of that, instead of 12 hours, if it takes, let's say, three mi three to four minutes to do it. Oh, it's wow. a very simple query. It's not mm -hmm. machine learning. Mm -hmm. It is porting your existing queries yeah, uh, written in PL, over. SQL or whatever over to big data. Mm -hmm. And and that's a Hadoop environment. And, that's, and yes, that's Hadoop. In, and the color of that data warehouse was red or blue or? <laughs> <laughs> The ticker symbol was. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I, I mean, the reason I'm I'm asking is I would expect that um, a big financial services company that has a credit card can just has an unlimited credit card and can just buy more. What was the technical challenge to not scale that out farther? Was it just limited hardware scale, capability? Scale, yes. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So you just hit you just hit the maximum limit on hardware. Most of the enterprise data warehouses, despite the investments that are made very quickly, um, and this is not just specific to the organization where I was in, but in talking to enterprise companies, they end up hitting their peak capacity to support SLAs very quickly mm. within a matter of uh, the plan four years, it's happening in two years. Mm. So to say I'm going to run that query on 12 months worth of historical data instead mm. of three months, and this is a very simple query. The second one that the, the example is, I'm trying to develop a new fraud algorithm mm. and the data, let's say there's a source system, like let's say, uh, let's, let's just use, wow, you guys made it wet too, nice. <laughs> it's like in my old school. That's right. <laughs> wet sponge, yeah. And That's the only thing we had in East Germany. <laughs> <laughs> And, and a big ruler that we got to... Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the source system, or you can call this any one of these sensor systems, and this mm -hmm. is not specific to machine learning, and these days the Internet of Things is a big deal. 
it's sending a lot of data. Mm. Uh, a lot of data doesn't just mean the speed, the pace, but it could mean it's sending thousands of attributes. Yeah. Of variables, uh, right. depending on the complexity. On an individual of the user. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's say there's an event, uh, swipe, or whatever, native plus derived variables. Going over here, uh, there's only limited space here, and only the post key variables are kept here. Mm -hmm. But but the other one is what if I could keep additional variables to right. improve my algorithm. Right. Again, we're not going into machine learning, and it's not just one. If I do a join, what do I do? If I do a join mm -hmm. with another data set over here, it becomes really expensive. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And the so the breadth and the depth, just moving these to over, the, uh, over there is the most immediate impact. You can show a quick ROI for that mm. and then take it from there.